Hello, my friends. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Charlene Demery Ames, and I was on the power panel the other day at the Women's Empowerment Conference with some incredible ladies. So since then, a few people have asked me to tell them about, you know, my testimony. So I'm very happy to do that for you right now. Hopefully I can get through quick enough and condensed enough so I don't bore anybody. But anyways, a little backtrack in where I'm from. My parents are the incredible Kenneth Austin Demery, otherwise known as Skip. And my beautiful mama is Rosemary Diane Demery, known as Diane. And they have been married happily for 56 years. Now, with that, they have seven kids. Yes, seven. And six of them are we girls. So, of course, my brother is my favorite. Love him so much. But anyways, they, they taught us how to be strong people. As daddy was always a carpenter, just like Jesus still is, and mom was always able to be home with us and take care of us at home as she watched tons of other children too. So there was never just us in a house. It was always a full, happy house. The more the merrier, they always said, and that was the truth. Anyways, also, just to let you know about what I've been doing for the last 31 years, is I've been happily married to the most amazing man. Every single great thing you could say about somebody, that's Randy. My husband, Randall Scott Ames, is empathetic. He's genuine. He's loyal. He is the most caring and trusting man, not to mention beautiful, <laughs> that, you know, I could have ever been blessed with. Most of all, he's godly, and that's what is so attractive on him. But anyways, together, we have raised three children who are now all adults, happily, and their names are Demery, my maiden name. We call her Demi, she came first. And she is now married to another godly man named Troy Frazier, who we love and adore very much. They have our first two grandbabies, and that's Zayden and our wonderful Canyon. Our two grandbaby boys are one of the joys of my life. Next is our daughter, Stevanna, whom we call Stevie. And she is married to Garrett. And Garrett is another godly boy, Garrett Tanner, who we just couldn't do without either. He is wonderful. And yes, praise the Lord, they just found out that they're expecting our third grandbaby. So my life is pretty normal. And then there is my wonderful son. He's number three, last but not least for sure. He is amazing. He's not married yet because he's young and he's figured things out and he's doing a great job at it. They're all strong, amazing, hardworking kids that I know have blessed Randy's in my life completely. They all went to Foundation Academy, which is a Christian academy. And honestly, that's the best money we ever spent. They all love the Lord and that's what does my heart the happiest? Knowing that my children have the Lord and that our grandchildren will have the Lord. I feel like that's our most important job. So yes, let me tell you why I'm here. My testimony starts with the fact that at the time, all three of my kids, their ages at the time, Demi was six and a half. Yep. Kenny was only 14 months old. And my middle child, Stevanna, she was only four. And what happened was 
on May 10th, 2001. Yep. How many years ago? 21 years ago. Ah, I actually had woke up late, Demi and I, to get her off to school. And Randy had already come home from work because he was working nights at Delta. I asked him because I felt like I hadn't seen him in the last few days. Randy, I actually begged him, can you please just, you know, put the babies in the car with us and we'll just go to Demi's school together. Maybe go out to lunch or, or breakfast first or something. And he looked at me and he was just dead tired. And as much as he wanted to, he just said, no, keep the babies in bed. You go ahead. He kissed Demi goodbye and we went off to school. So I took her, I took her there to her class, the dear Miss Pines class. Thank God I always prayed that they would get a Christian teacher before they were actually at a Christian school and surely they did, praise God. There's always so many blessings when you have the Lord. So anyways, I went to, took Demi to Miss Pines door and she actually met us at the door and she prayed that Demi, let's pray that we can all work together, baby. And then your mommy and you can get you to school on time. How's that sound? And of course we prayed and she even prayed for the safety of mine coming and going, taking them to and from school and themselves. Just praying we're all safe, whether we're driving in the car or we're home, home, you know, wherever we live. So just wonderful to have a Christian teacher that would pray with me and my child as I was dropping her off. So Demi smiled. I kissed her and she ran to her desk all happy as can be. And I waved goodbye to her. So as we left... I left for home, which was only a few miles away. I was driving on 50 and I came upon at a normal speed and I came upon which was Greater Hills on the left and Center Care Down on the left there. And what happened was I was following a truck that actually had a faulty tarp on it and it was carrying material that was building of all other, the Special Olympics building, lovely enough. So what it was happening is I was driving and one of those pieces of material flew up into my windshield. This was what eyewitnesses said because praise God, I don't remember. And I was in a tippy Ford Explorer, Sport Explorer at the time, and I rolled four and a half times at that point. So actually, I was thrown out of the vehicle, even knowing that I never drove without my seatbelt on. So I, I swore up and down, I know I had it on when this all came you know, and to being an investigated in the lawsuit after. But thank God that they proved, it was miracle after miracle because they proved at that point that had I not been thrown out of the vehicle at some point in that four and a half times of the rollover and thrown, then I would have actually been beheaded, which is such a blessing. Thank God I was not beheaded. And thank God none of the children were in the vehicle or Randy with me. So that's another miracle right there. He just made Randy too tired to want to leave. Anyways, a nurse of all people, thank you, Jesus, was directly in the car behind me witnessing everything. She stopped, obviously, as everything came to us. To a halt. She ran over to me and she told the people do not move her because it will injure her more. I'm a nurse. 
and they listened to her and she said, and by the way, she has a name, go find something with her ID on it and we'll call her by name. And they found it right away that my name was Charlene. So she started and stayed by my side until the ambulance and whatnot arrived. And thank you, Jesus. What was her name? Fittingly, Jennifer A-M-E-N-T. So amen with a cross. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but anyway, she said that I was still conscious, conscious, and I was told then that I was life flighted to ORMC oh, because the first thing that was out of the vehicle was my head. So obviously I had a very bad brain injury, but for some reason remained conscious. Thank you, Jesus. So anyways, my husband later told me, even recently, a few years ago, that when it was hard for him to talk about that when he checked into RMC at the ICU, what after getting that horrible, horrible phone call that I can't even imagine, he checked in and at the desk, the lady said, oh yeah, Charlene Ames? And he said, yeah. He goes, okay, Mr. Ames, have a seat. The pastor will be right with you. So at that point, he thought that I was already gone. I just can't imagine what the love of my life had to go through in this whole thing. So meanwhile, my children stayed with my loyal friend, excuse me, Jan Deerdorf, who was first called by the police because that's the address they found on my ID. We had been running a house for them. As we were waiting, ironically, for our new two-story house to be built and it was almost done. But anyways, she stayed with the children, with the babies while Randy went. <sighs> but anyways, the doctor told my husband and my parents who got there immediately that they could see initially that my neck was fractured, was broken at what now we know was Christopher Reeves level. My spine, my back was broken somewhere in the thoracic area, they, they assumed. They could see that my left leg, sorry, was broken. So my left leg, all my ribs were broken, cracked, and my lungs had collapsed. And being that I had asthma, that was not a good thing. On top of all that, I had the brain injury. So of course they had me in a drug induced coma. So I would not move at all anymore to increase maybe the spinal cord injury. They said that they had to wait at least 10 days to see if the swelling would go down before they could do any kind, any kind of operation or whatnot. Ah. My, liter my body was literally broken from head to toe. So that, that was that. I gotta say one, one thing was when I was in the ICU that first night, these scars show on my arm. I don't know if you can see them. It's kind of hard to see in this, but scars and show that I had road rash just all over my body and dirt. <laughs> And that bothered Grandma Eleanor. I don't care if it was the first night. She always told us we better be wearing clean underwear, which it was, thank you, Grandma. So I was wearing my clean underwear, thank God. But she didn't like the dirt on me. So she said to the nurse, can someone please clean this dirt off these you know, wounds of hers? This is ridiculous. Somebody could, you know, obviously do that and make her more comfortable. 
and a nurse blatantly had the audacity to look at my grandma in the eyes and say, ma'am, she's not gonna make it through the night. That's the last of our worries. What? You cannot ever take hope away from anybody, especially when you have the Lord our God, our great physician. There's always hope, always. So after making it through that night, okay, miracles after miracles, I'm telling you, I hope this doesn't bore anyone, but I need to give my Jesus all the credit he deserves. So Pastor Doug, huh, the faithful Pastor Doug, he was there with my parents because he is our family. We adore him and his family always will. He was there by my parents' side and my husband's side, obviously. So in the ICU room came Pastor Doug with my husband and Jackie Riley, who was at the time and for a long time before that, our Bible study teacher, mine and Randy's. She would have been 93 this year. She was an African missionary of 22 years and she knew her word. So I trusted with all my heart and Randy's whole heart to teach us and learn in the word with her. So we trusted her as she was my grandma Elner's best friend and my mother's recruit Mary Kay, go figure. So she was in there with us. Randy, Pastor Doug, and Jackie Riley were praying over my broken body. And they started praying Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, as we all know the words. And miraculously enough, me being on a ventilator that was breathing for me because my lungs were collapsed and whatnot, it was breathing for me and my whole body was obviously in a still coma besides that drug induced. But I started miraculously as I have hidden the word of my heart so I might not sin against thee. I started mouthing, all three of them told me this after, I started mouthing every single word to Psalm 23 along with them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit in my heart. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And at that moment when the prayer was over, they both in unison, Pastor Doug and Jackie Riley looked at Randy and they said, She's going to be just fine. The Lord just told us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They said God is able. And I knew that. And we've always believed that. Yes. I'm sorry that I had to write down notes because there's so many details that are so important and feel free to fast forward whatever you want to do. So then 10 days passed and the doctors did decide to go in and do surgery to repair whatever they can. But again, they said to my whole family and of course my husband, number one, they said, please don't expect a lot as we don't because her body's broken. We can't, we will do whatever we can. So they did go in and when they came out, he took his mask off, they all said. And they, he told them, the doctor, the surgeon came out and said to them, we can't explain it. It's all been documented, but number one, 
her fractured neck is completely healed. Praise the Lord. Completely healed. So she will probably most likely have all of her arm movement as soon as possible with, with a lot of rehab, no doubt. But that's a big, big win for her, is what he said. And he said, we also can't explain it, but not only is her leg healed, but her ribs are healed. Her lungs look much better. And considering she has asthma, that's incredible. Her brain injury looks promising. Yes, she still has a spinal cord injury on her thoracic nine and 10 level, but pray, they didn't say praise, praise the Lord, but they said, we can't explain it, but we believe she's gonna make it with intensive rehab and therapy. She will never walk again because her injury is complete. But funnier things have happened. And they said, all of my family and Randy, they were all praising the Lord and they said, you don't have to explain it. We know that it was God. It's prayers. It's God's miracle. Praise the Lord. And that was only the beginning, miracles after miracles. And apparently I did start using my arms right away after that because I was a very bad girl in that ICU. I had the hospital's record at, and I don't remember this at all, praise the Lord, because I wouldn't have been this bad, but for some reason, the feeding tube or something was was in me, up my nose, and it was bothering me bad. So every time I just kept raising up my hands and pulling it out when I was able, because my arms were working. And I had like the hospital record how many times that I did that, which is not a happy, that's not something to be proud of. But anyways, the doctor said that the next step is rehabilitation and I need to be transported um, by, you know, a medical flight a medical helicopter or life flighted to a rehabilitation center. And they were recommending Shepherd Center, which is a brain and spinal cord injury center in Atlanta, Georgia. And God had already worked that out too, miraculously. Because my insurance, there was only one bed left. They researched it and whatnot, and Randy wanted me to go there because it was the best place. And he said, I'm taking her to the best place so she can still be the wife and the mommy that I know she wants to be. And praise the Lord, that's why marriages work under God, because he knew what I was feeling, that that's exactly what I needed. So my insurance was not gonna pay for a life flight to get there, a medical transport to get there, cause it was thousands of dollars. And Randy was, you know, talked to the guys at work at Delta and he said, they told him here at Orlando that we're working with the guys in Atlanta, Randy. And since you were there, they remember him and they wanted to help him in any way because he was a young lead at the time. We lived in Atlanta six years before we lived in Orlando together. They loved him there. He was amazing lead and they said, whatever we got to do, Randy, whether we have to change a plane around ourselves and make it work, 
we will get her to Atlanta and she will get that last bed. That was all God. That just doesn't happen in most major corporations. And we thank the Lord for Delta Airlines for doing that. Yeah, they said they'd modify an airplane themselves if they had to. So they paid to get me there. No other company would have ever done that. Thank you, Jesus. So anyways, because of my brain injury, I, I we got there and Randy was able to be by my side. Praise the Lord. <sighs> what was amazing was every time Randy would show up at work from the brain and spinal cord injury center where I was by my side, he was staying. He'd get dressed for work and go there and tell the nurses, I'll be back as soon as possible. And they would tell him as soon as he gets there, what are you doing, Randy? Shar sure needs you, get there. Incredible, and did you know that Delta never stopped paying him or never docked him an hour's pay? And they never let him work when he was there once in a blue moon when he sat, insisted, but he was staying with me there at the Brain and Spinal Cord Injury Center. Well, our children, praise the Lord, that I told you about that mom and daddy who raised us in our beautiful, humongous family between my mom and dad, Randy's mom and dad in New York, and my sisters and brother here, and Randy's two sisters in New York. Our children were kept happily and healthily for the entire time that their mom and daddy were gone, which is crazy. And I'll tell you what, you all know her very well. She is the owner and founder of Unforsaken Ministries. Thank you, Mo Midlow, and her wonderful husband, Tommy, that went from three children at the time to six children at the time. They took my three in, and they mostly stayed with them only because, of course, Demi and Jacob went to the same school at the time, Lost Lake Elementary, and they didn't even think twice about it. They lived right next to us at the time, so it worked out. And of course, they, my sisters and, and everybody took turns, my mom and dad, they all just loved on my children, which had to have been so hard to explain why mommy and daddy weren't there, but they managed to keep them so wonderful. So anyways, it was honestly, to sum it all up, a huge struggle. Yes, I can't even believe it myself, what we do when we have to do it, but that was my motivation. I had to learn how to do everything again. But I told the team of doctors that were assigned to me at Atlanta Shepherd Center, which incredible, incredible people that what do I need to do today to get home to my babies? I was on, you know, I didn't even know anything really the, for the whole first month and a half due to the brain injury. But once it started coming, you know, it came like a little bit at a time. It was very vague because of the brain injury and it was very gradual, but they were my motivation. Absolutely. And like I said, it was honestly a struggle constantly. I had to learn everything all over again because of the brain injury. I had to learn how to chew, which is crazy. Like that's such an easy thing to do, to chew and swallow, right? Not with a brain injury until my daddy brought me some gum. And I remembered how much I loved chewing gum. Whatever works. So it was very painful. I remember that pain beyond anything I could have ever imagined because I had the back brace on still. I mean, they were hoiter lifting me 
from my bed to my wheelchair. I mean, it was a constant struggle. Like I, that was before I could even transfer myself. So it was a long haul, but I had to learn five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time, gradually an hour, two, three, up to eight hours and whatnot, a whole day to stay in that wheelchair with a back brace and it hurt. I, with a brain injury, talk about, you know, a constant struggle. I couldn't keep my fingers off the buzzers and calling the nurses and driving them crazy. Sorry, all you RNs, including my daughter. I was a horrible patient because I was anxious and I had a trach, which they had to plug at night. So I couldn't talk all night. And it drove me crazy because obviously I'm a talker, but I kept thinking all the what ifs. What if there's a fire and nobody hears me because I can't talk and they don't put me, I can't yell to put me in my wheelchair to get out of this hospital and whatnot. So it just came down to Randy literally held my hand in the rail of my bed. Yes, he's an angel, praise the Lord. He held my hand to get me to sleep every night. The most incredible man, I'm telling you, and the nurses and doctors all there told me that many times and I already knew it. But every time they told me, I would cry in happiness that he was always by my side. Yes, he was, because he always knew too what I needed. Like, even when I couldn't talk, he knew when my trachea needed suction or when my lungs needed suction or when my feeding tube was, whatever it was, Randy knew, praise the Lord, because the Holy Spirit was in him, guiding and guarding him and counseling him. Oh, friends, it's so important to have the Lord. So, so, so important. I had every therapist known to man there. And every class Randy and I both had to take to learn how to take care of myself in this wheelchair. So I had occupational therapists. I had physical therapists that had to teach me everything, including you know how to do everything in a wheelchair like lifts and whatnot so i don't get pressure sores da 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 dee 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 all the way down to lastly while i was there i had to randy and i both learned in many of the classes what all the percentages were and whatnot and the sexual therapist was last thank god that was weird but we knew ahead of time what to expect and what this little man that I remember, little beady eyed man, uh, we were to come into his office and I wheeled in as Randy was behind me, pushing me, holding my hand all the time because I was a fragile mess. And this little man didn't even say hello he started shutting the door as he led us into his office. And he said to Randy and I, not a hi hello or anything first, he said, did you know that the divorce rate in a spinal cord injury victim in the extent that your wives is in, Randy, there is a 90, and Randy grabbed his hand, shook it, and he said, we know the numbers, and I refuse to be a number. Thank you, and how are you? My name is Randy, yes, and this is my wife, Charlene. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I cried in happiness again. Yes, he knows the numbers, that there's a 95% plus chance of divorce rate in a wheelchair, but 
that did not stop Randy from ever being the most loyal and caring individual that there's ever been in my life. Thank you, Jesus. So anyways, on to that, that was a nightmare that Randy made into a dream. So now I promise, summing it all up, you all know Tommy. And when they finally told me that I was well enough to go on my first outing, I asked Randy, can you please have Tommy and Momo bring the kids here? We'll pay, you know, for gas or whatever we got to pay, please. Um, so I could see the kids and we'll all do something together. Well, Tommy, the last time he had seen me was at ORMC way back when I was in the ICU. Right after the accident, Momo had to see me. Um, every one of my family did. And Tommy went in with Momo. But he said, I'm sorry, Rand. I'm I'm sorry, Mo, I got to get out of here. This is not Char. Because, of course, my face was all messed up. My head, everything where it had come first thing out of the car. It was just not me. I was on a ventilator and whatnot. And he just said, that's not Char. I don't want to remember her this way. So anyways, that's why they gladly had our children, too. But anyways, the next time he was going to see me was this time. It was an outing, and he asked Randy, are you sure, Randy, you want us to come up here? And he goes, yes, Char's great. She wants to see the kids. So when they got there, I rolled. I knew they were coming. I rolled as quick as I could down the hallway to grab those babies. And Tommy saw me, and... He was amazed and he said, Char, it's really you again. It's you, Char. God has literally saved you. You are a miracle. You are God's miracle. And Tommy's told this story many times that that led him to become the man of God that he is. That if that was, and this, this, he knows true of me. I just got Holy Spirit chills. So you know that is true from the crown of my head down to where I can feel him. That if Tommy being saved and having eternal life and joining us, in God's kingdom, if that were the only reason this were to lead him for that to happen, it was surely worth it. It was worth it to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. So all this, what's incredible is they told me that I was supposed to be at Shepherd Center for at least nine and a half months to a year is the normal time for an injury is, you know, as bad as mine. But because I had the motivation of getting home to those babies, every day I asked them, what can I do today to get home to my babies, doctors? So they knew how bad I wanted and I needed that for healing. Excuse me. Nothing pretty about that. But anyways, so I did that, what most people do, in only three and a half months. So when I got to squeeze those babies, that was the last time that... I promised them I was never going to leave them again. This was the last time they had to go home this time with Tommy and Mo. But I was coming home soon. And I did. Thank you, Jesus. And this is why, friends, you need to know 
that what may not be possible with people, with doctors who don't have the Lord, they just think, I can't explain it. What may not be possible to most is possible with God. And God, all things are possible. Yes, they are. It's so truth. That word tells us so. And it's only the truth that we'll ever need in our life is his holy word. So it's so important in your lives, friends, please find the Lord. If you don't know the Lord, ask someone that does. Come to me, come to Momo, come to Tammy, come to Sarah, come to Tommy, come to any of us in Unforsaken Ministries. Come to my mom, come to my dad, or any of my sisters or brother, or come to Randy's two sisters. Come to all of us, Randy or I. Come to my kids. Come to their husbands. Come to anyone that you know loves the Lord. And they'll tell you just exactly all it takes to be saved because it's so easy and it's such a gift, but it only stays wrapped like a beautiful gift on a shelf that you never unwrap unless you actually unwrap God. You knock on his door, he'll answer. And he has miracles waiting for you too. It was a lonely place at Shepherd Center when I'd roll by and see some of these rooms where you know, you know that they have never heard of the Lord or relied on the Lord to get through it. Lord help them, Jesus, I always pray for them because it's such a cool thing to go through a spinal cord injury or anything to ever be in the hospital whatsoever. Let me tell you what, friends, I have a wheelchair and you can see mine, but that's the only difference. I do have one, see? <laughs> yes, I do. The only difference between me and everybody out there, I don't care if it's something that's happening behind closed doors that they're hiding, I don't care if it's their health they don't want to tell about. I don't care if it's an abuse they don't want to tell about. I don't care what it is. They may be in the worst pain possible. They may be going through horrible rheumatoid arthritis and nobody knows the pain that is. They may have anxiety that eats at them the most in the most horrible, horrible way. And they can't tell anybody. <laughs> they may be having an affair and not telling anybody. They may be so lonely that they don't have anybody. Let me tell you, friend, Find Jesus, find the Lord. It's never too late. He wants you, he needs you. We all have a wheelchair. You can just see mine. I know, <laughs> yeah, that I'm a walking billboard in this chair for him. I lost these legs. But I did not lose my mouth to speak of him. Praise the Lord, and I always will. And I really wanted to share all this with you, my friends. He's got miracles waiting for you too. Yes, he does. I just pray that even one person gets something out of this. 
I hope you all are so God blessed today, tonight, tomorrow, and every day. And that you enjoy walking with the King. Bye-bye.